Aqua is now investigating how offshore wind farms in the North Sea affect Atlantic cod. As a part of the European Union's renewable energy targets, many offshore wind farms are planned to be built in the coming years in the Greater North Sea area, potentially doubling the area of offshore wind farms in the North Sea, affecting marine life in many different ways. Therefore, DTU Aqua is studying how these offshore structures affect an especially iconic marine organism, the Atlantic cod, with a special focus on whether cod are able to spawn within offshore wind farms, thereby shedding further light on both the positive and negative effects of offshore wind farms on marine fish. Now that you have seen a wind farm from above, let's dive under and see it from underneath the surface. The conventional way of placing windmills on the seabed is done by creating a foundation on which the windmill can stand. The foundation is typically a large metal tube, which is stabilized with a surrounding layer of boulders to protect the construction from being undermined by the scouring forces of the currents. The metal tube and the stabilizing boulders creates a form of artificial man-made reef. Here seaweed, mussels and other immobile marine creatures can fasten themselves, and with time this can become a thriving marine habitat, which in turn attracts larger animals like cod. The theory is that these artificial reefs potentially are so beneficial for the cod that they could utilize the wind farm areas as spawning grounds. However, this has not yet been documented, and therefore DTU Aqua is now investigating the issue, asking the question, how are offshore wind farms affecting marine life? If the cod really do spawn between the windmills in the wind farms, it would very likely look like this. Here cod are seen spawning near the windmill structures. Cod may congregate near underwater structures, like reefs and wrecks in connection with spawning, structures that are similar to the windmill foundations. Cod spawning occurs at different times of the year in the North Sea, off the coast of Denmark, where the investigations are taking place, it is around February and March. Therefore, the investigations into cod spawning behavior is also focused on these months. Cod, like many other fishes, have external fertilization where the eggs and sperm are secreted directly into the water and mixed together outside of the protective environment of the body. The fertilized eggs are now at the mercy of the currents and drift without any control of direction or speed. The eggs can drift for many miles and end up in many different places, far from where they were initially spawned. Therefore, if cod spawn inside offshore wind farms, these areas can function as sources of cod eggs that can then be spread over a vast area, potentially boosting cod populations elsewhere in the North Sea. This is additionally interesting as fishing is often restricted inside offshore wind farms, whereby the areas essentially function as fish sanctuaries may be also protecting spawning cod. Depending on environmental conditions, the eggs hatch after approximately 15 days. At this stage the hatched cod are called larvae and do not yet resemble small cod. They are though still drifting with the currents, and this continues for a further 4 to 8 weeks. After this stage it is recognizable as a very small cod. The juvenile cod that has until now lived as a part of the pelagic plankton now has the ability to swim and seeks the bottom and will now become a bottom dwelling fish for the rest of its life. This transition from living high up in the water column to living on the bottom is called settling. Settling can happen in many different places, but a very common settling location is coastal habitats where the small cod can find protection and shelter in seaweed, stone reefs, eelgrass and mussel reefs. This illustrates how different habitats are connected to the different pots of the cod's life cycle and how spawning inside offshore wind farms could affect cod populations miles and miles away. How will DTU Aqua then establish if cod indeed spawn in the offshore wind farms? In order to investigate this, a method called acoustic underwater telemetry is employed. This method works by first setting up a network of hydrophones which are essentially large, very sensitive underwater microphones. The hydrophones are placed between the windmills in the wind form in a grid-like fashion, establishing a network. The next step is to catch some cod inside the wind farm. The caught cod then get tagged with very small acoustic tags and released back into the wind farm. Acoustic tags are a kind of special underwater loudspeakers, just very small ones that only emit high-frequency sounds 
undetectable to the human ear. These high-frequency sounds are, however, detectable to the hydrophones that have been set up in the wind form. Thereby, when a tagged cod swims by a hydrophone, the sound that the tag emits is detected by the hydrophone and the detection data is stored. So, when the tagged cod swim around inside the wind form, the network of hydrophones enables the scientists to track the movements of individual cod and establish if they are present in the wind farm and where in the wind form they are situated at any given time. This makes it possible to determine if the cod are present inside the wind farm in the spawning season, and if they are, if their behavior matches known cod spawning behavior. To summarize, DTU Aqua want to investigate cod behavior inside offshore wind farms, with special focus on spawning behavior. This will be done using the method of acoustic underwater telemetry, where cod are tagged with acoustic tags that enables tracking of individual cod inside an offshore wind farm, thereby hopefully discovering if cod spawn inside the wind farm, providing additional information of the effects of offshore wind farms on the cod population in the North Sea. The project is supported by DTU Offshore and Orsted.